I don't know if Putney was planning to join or not. I didn't hear from him though. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know if you guys want to start with things on your list or the thing I want to talk about is joint inversions and uh, combo it. objective functions. Yeah. Um, so. A lot to my screen. So, Franklin, you can see the. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Perfect. Cool, cool. Okay, so what I wanted to go over is the objective function stuff. Um, in particular, with joint versions, I was looking at your directives and also your script um, just to get some ideas on like where constraints are and what kind of things we want to be able to do. Um, so the first thing I, well, there, there was two things that came up, is both, which we're chatting about the validation of directives and then like working with properties of the objective function. I'll start with the validation because I think that's more straightforward. Um, so in this case, there are things like uh, the ordering matters, um, as well as potentially like the type of objective function you feed something. So like the IRLS, you should only give it the sparse. If you give it anything else, like it's not actually going to do anything. Right, 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 right. Um, so in this case, what I've done is added um, a directive. Uh, I've added a validate to the uh, base directive. So all it does, let's see. So validate, like by default, it'll just return true. So if the default directive is valid. Um, and then if you want to go and do something like, uh, this was on the IRLS. Um, so if all I did was check if there's a linear preconditioner, and then if there is, uh, it needs to be before. So uh, this will just fail. Yeah. Uh, and then print out, like, please put your directive before. That's good. Uh, otherwise, if there isn't a linear preconditioner, and this is a question for you, all I did is basically say, like, convergence might be slow. So I throw a warning, but I'll still let it run. OK. That's. Well, I mean, yeah, the, every directive is going to be different, but you pretty much just put a switch there for us. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so like yeah. this this validate is specifically on the IRLS directive. Yeah, what so, do you put it? Sorry, you put it. Right after your when you create your uh, your uh, your directive. Oh, it doesn't actually go. This gets big. Um, so it doesn't go, like in the uh, no. initialize or anything like that. It's just a separate method. So here there is just a new method called def validate. Uh, okay. That takes itself and it takes a directive list. I see. And so we can add any uh, directives, any checkpoint your directives inside that function. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. Gotcha. So it can be anything about the uh, creation of the directive. And then also uh, why I gave it the list is because it does, Order. like it cares about the other things in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then all that happens, like when this is actually called, is within the, um, so this is now when you create a directive list, all it does uh, is now the directive list has a method called validate on itself. And it's just going to go through all of its directives and say, are you valid, yes or no. Oh, and then okay. if they're all valid, then we're right. good to go. Right, 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 right. Um, that already existed, right? Directive list is called by optimization or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So directive list already existed, but now it's it validated. just has a validate method. Sweet, on it. sweet. And that um, Franklin down the road can play with properties nicely, potentially. Um, we don't have properties injected into the directives yet, but that's on the list. <laughs> so where is this? <laughs> yeah. Where, where, where are your modifications? In, in directives. Okay. No, but uh, your branch. What branch? Oh, I, I'm doing a pull request onto your mag amplitude. Perfect. I'm just bring it in. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. So that's like pretty Sanity straight. Check. Yeah. It's nice to have because especially when you start playing with multiple directives and things like that. So, like, yeah. Safety. Cool. OK, so that's that one. 
This is one that I would appreciate thoughts on. I was chatting with Rowan a bit about it last night, um, mostly because I just started playing with some like base functionality in Python, and as soon as you start messing with like set attribute and get attribute, that scares me. But hmm. you can do some really cool things. I get it. Um, so, because what I noticed, um, Dom, in your example is um so let's do this so you had done something like this and then defined you used sparse but that's fine so reg is whatever one times reg one plus two times reg two so we're not going to do a joint version for two different parameters um and then you wanted to set like the MREF, for example. Um, and so in this case, if you just do reg.mref equals that, that doesn't actually, in its current state, that doesn't talk to reg1 and reg2. All that, that that has done is basically just added a property to reg called mref. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't actually do anything. But I totally agree that it should. Um, so like we should be able to, if you've created something that is composed of two regularizations, both of which have an mref, you should be able to just set them from the top level. Uh, and then it would just uh, trickle down. Yeah. So this is what we were getting at when, I was, when we were talking about expose uh, like to try and expose properties. Um, and so I think um, when I was talking to Rowan, I think link is actually better and we can get into the details of why. Um, so I'll show you an example of how like I think this should work. So in this case, we have our reg one and reg two. And right now if I set two different mrefs, so if I do reg one dot mref, one's reg2.mref is twos. Okay, so now I want to define my regularization, which is now composed of those two things. And now I want to be able to access mref on both. So what the idea here is, is to use something like a link to basically then expose mref from the children objective functions to the top level. So now if I do something like this, if I set reg.mref on my combo, and I want to then see what reg1.mref is, it is now that change propagated. OK. What is going to happen if, um, if reg1 and reg2 are not in C long? Like for instance, reg2 could be. Uh, and C, right? No, so, regularization is always on the, is always on the... Yeah, regularization should always be on the model. So the sizing, the sizing issue... Oh, no, okay, sorry, the wires, okay, no, that, that's the thing. Yeah, 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 I see, I see. Wow, okay, because in my case, my that's my reg two. Yeah. Is um, is a combo, right? Yeah. Oh, your reg two. Reg two is a combo. Okay. So will that propagate all the way through the combos as well? If if we've set, like if we've chosen to expose it, yes. Or chosen to expose that specific property, yes. Okay. And that's good. Well, I guess those are, it's a deeper level. What's link? I've never seen link before. What does it do? It, it, that is, right now, that is what is exposing the mref property okay. of the lower level guys to the top level. Okay, so you've created, the, you've created that thing, link. It's, yeah, I've created a sketchy version of it. Okay. Um, and so right now, oh, it doesn't, like, what, let me pull up this comment. Because I, I was chatting with Rowan last night, and there's some weird things potentially in terms of behavior that we want to just clear up. 
Okay. So right now, if we expose MREF or link, uh, well, this is why I've switched to link. link. But if we started with thinking about exposing MREF, and all that that was going to do is basically give you a downward propagating yes. thing. Yes, yes. The upward um, is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I getcha, getcha. And so um, if we set MREF is A and we print that, that would have propagated all the way down. So yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Um, but then in the in its current status, you actually could go in and change reg one and reg two um, independently, and that's confusing. So you mean you would be changing from a top level and after that re rechanging it uh, individually? Is that what you're? No, is if if you decided to do that. So if I set reg one dot mref is a. Yeah. And I set reg two dot is b, mm -hmm. and now I'm looking at the top level function. What should that return? Yeah. Um, and so, the way I think we work around that is we actually, instead of exposing and just giving you a downward propagating thing, we tie them all together, and basically say now if I change mref on the top level. That changes it in the bottom level. Mm -hmm. If I change it in the bottom level, it's also going to change it in the top level. So we tie these things together through a link, and then give you then an option to unlink. Okay, so give me an example. Of what's going to happen? Okay, so in this case, yeah. if we set reg.mref is a, and print that, you just get back a, and then you get back a for all of the children objective functions. Now, if we set reg1.mref is b, mm -hmm. that's going to propagate it to all of the things that it's tied to. What do you mean by that? So if I've tied together reg1 and reg2. Oh, reg2 is going to become b reg as well. Reg2 is going to become b as well. But that's not OK. Is that, that's not really helping us, is it? <laughs> Well, I think, I guess the, like, my comment here is like, I would be inclined to throw a warning at you if you do this, if you're, if you do write one dot um, like throw a warning that says this is linked to these other objective functions. We are changing those as well. Um, because I like, you should be working at it from the, the top level if you've explicitly tied these things together. But what this achieves is then that there's no ambiguity of what reg.mref should be returning. Like the combo objective function, it is well defined what it should return. Um, yeah. I, I thought the, uh, our goal was to be able to uh, change things from the top of the combo objective function, right? To just Without creating lists and looking through lists. Yeah. Yep. Is that is, is that helping us? Yeah, this helps us because in this case, reg dot mref actually exists and is then tied. We we tied all these things together. Mm, I see. I see. Okay. So if you want to operate on the top level, I see. I see. If you still want to trigger each one, if you want to change individual and individual components, you still need you we'll still need, need to loop, loop through it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, that's something that we can think about. It's because maybe this is too complicated. Like, maybe it would just be better to, uh, that's also good. Well, the, the other thing that we could do is provide, if you call reg.mref, it then just gives you back that list of all of the objective functions mrefs. Um, the subtle thing there is that if you have added objective functions together that don't have an MREF, it would just be an empty list. The sizes should be the same, though. So it could return none. No, but uh, no, I, I know, yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. Like it would be a list, right? And in that list, those that have MREF are going to have a vector, and those that don't have an MREF are going to have an, an empty. You know, Empty entry or not. Okay. That's fair. It's just be, again, okay, same thing is happening right now in the joint inversion, right? So 
it's a, uh, you call it what's deep red. Uh, I would want to have a list always, you know, because um, each uh, each misfit function should return something when you ask what my deep red is. Right. Can we always return lists? Why are we not returning lists? You know, even if it's not uh, if it's not a combo or. Oh, just always return lists, huh? Because it makes things simpler, I and mean, then it's always. Then we're always going to. It's always going to be a loop through a list and then extract things out. Yeah. If it's a list of one. It's a list of one. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. We can do That's that. That's great. We yeah. can do that. Is is this like this? This is still good, right? Because this still will still be operating on on the list or yeah. on the combo of everything. Absolutely. Okay. So we want to be returning lists, and you do want to then. We still want to be able to you know, set stuff it down, from top level. But then when you call stuff from up, yeah, then you, you need to see everything, list. right? I, I think so. I would vote for that. Okay. So it's up to you guys. You're. No, I mean it's like up for discussion. Is yeah. this? It is. We're defining how we want to interact with this. Okay. That's fair. Franklin, have you played around with like tying and linking? Uh, yeah. Properties? yeah, so there's actually a, a branch of properties now, or maybe we merged it. That's that's linking. Um, okay. So uh, I guess I should. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's like it's properties dot link, and then you give it a instance and a property name, and you can just give it like as many as many instances and property names as you want, and it'll. Link them all together. So when you change one, it changes them all, and it can be directional or it can be um, like just changing one changes the other, but changing the other doesn't change one. Cool. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's it's on a on a pull request if you want to see it. But um, yeah, so I mean, it seems like that would be helpful. It looks kind of like that is what you're doing with link. I haven't looked at all at that simpeg code. So. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like. Um, it's very much a first pass implementation at this point. Um, yeah, because there's there's link, um, and then there's also like the the ability to expose it on the parent objective function. And the way I'm doing that now um, is, is through set attribute and get attribute, which is what I was sort of asking you about. Um, so when, you, oh, so, Go ahead. so when you add reg one and reg two, the thing that it creates doesn't have an M ref by default. Correct. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So the expose thing kind of turns it into something that you can see, and then you have to link whatever is exposed. That makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like. Which I think is the functionality we want. So, and it, it, there's a question too of like if we actually want to expose all of the properties like by uh, default instead of just instead of um, having to state it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't know what um I don't know enough of what is going into adding these regularizations together. So like if you add can you add two regularizations that look totally different into a a third one? So yeah. you can't you can't just be like take the overlapping stuff or something. Or well, maybe you could. Yeah, and you don't necessarily want to is like yeah. the because in some ways the point of creating two different ones is so that you can give them different attributes and different properties. But then, yeah. basically, top level, just say like evaluate this thing that I've created. <laughs> sure. Um, but what we could do is basically like expose. I feel like I'm hesitant, and I don't have handle on why. Um, we could we could expose everything at top level. Um, and then, basically, just give you lists back always. 
Yeah, we'll need an example to see what the output is. Yeah. I'm not sure right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that a little layers? That's fair. Um, yeah, Franklin, if you could um, even just ping me with which pull request you're looking at for linking, that's something I would appreciate playing around with. Yeah, sure. Here, I'll just put it in Slack. Just share my screen here. Okay, cool. I will take a look through this. Yeah, so yeah I, mean, I think that's it. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, it's basically just directional link and end link. That's awesome. OK. And so then this is a prop, this is like a property or an attribute of, of a property? <laughs> is that a weird way to say that? Uh, so the link, the link is just sort of like a function in properties. That okay. connects connects two different properties. Cool. Okay. Cool. And I'm like perfect. Did you want to go through the joint version example? You said you got something up and running. Well, yeah. Everything is. Uh, we still need to fix the. Uh, Scaling directives and all that stuff, okay. but it runs. The inversion runs, so that's cool. that, that's great. Okay. Can we look at the um, the way I, that's that's where I'm stuck right now is the way the uh, the predicted are, are handled. Right, so you have two misfit functions. Yeah. And right now they're added. They're added together. How does that? How does that? Uh, where where are they stored? Basically, where are your predicted data stored? Are are they sent back to their oh, yeah. to their individual misfit functions or? No, there, there's some weird, and I think you're right in that this needs to be probably completely rethought. So I believe that deep red. It should be in your inversion yeah. problem. Uh, in problem. So right now, I believe if you call deep red on the. Yeah, ah, deep red. yeah I really don't like this actually. So get dpred right now will return a list if it is a combo misfit, mm -hmm. or it'll just return uh, a vector. Mm -hmm. So that's on the inf prob. I think the data misfit. So this is again like on the top the top level. If you were to call like what is dpred of. Misfit uh, one and misfit two, yeah. Of yeah, your like composite, that wouldn't do anything as of right now. Can you repeat that? If you're calling D pred of of, of D misfit one plus D misfit two of the combo. Yeah. That won't do anything. Right. I don't think. No, well it returns something, but it's only a vector of you know, one of the two. So it I oh, would really? like if you uh, if you ask for a D misfit D pred, like your misfit D pred. It returns something, but it is, it's not twice the data length, if you want. Like, it doesn't have both in them. OK. Um, but now I realize that if I call get deep red, then it will return me a list for both. But that's in a different. And uh, you're calling that from? Where are you calling that from? Um, so you uh, you join together two misfit function becomes yeah. a, a combo misfit, right? Yeah. So you create the misfit one is a problem one, and the misfit two is a problem two. Yeah. You add them together, it's a it's a combo misfit function. Yeah. Oh and yeah, you should be able to call that thing. So if I call if I do this misfit function dot because usually it's a misfit that returns you predicted data, right? Yeah, yeah. 
if you do this on the combo, it returns me a, a list of with only one element in it, which is one of the two. But yeah, I don't get both, basically. But now I realize if I call inverse problem instead get the prep, it, it should return it to me. Okay. It, you sh it, should, it should error. That's really scary um, because it shouldn't, in the, in the current status, so let's try this. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so if we create, and then let's import. No problem. So you'll need a server, I think. Uh, yeah, you probably need a server. Yeah, let's create a potential field. So how do I do that? <laughs> yeah, probably equals, if you have the magnetics. Just a, okay. Yeah, and then that uh, I get and integral, that's sure. And then what does that guy say? Very bad then. <laughs> mesh is my mesh. Cool. So that. And you only do a survey too, right? Right. So then we do survey. Started from the, can you look in the in the driver? Yep. In the main driver. Driver, and then go down all the way down to uh, load the date. Then, how does it? Uh, observation. Base mag. Dot uh, base survey. mag. Okay. Should we think that? I will copy this guy. All right. And just put like like X Y Z can be. Uh, yeah. And B B will be a. Uh, Define me is also a tree. Does it sort of need to be? Uh, it's like amplitude and uh, uh, it's a methangle, just three numbers, any three numbers. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, it needs to be an array. What's the difference between as array and array? Uh, not why. It should. Oh, I, I guess array probably doesn't. As array, what's the thing? No, like np np, like yeah. But, oh, so yeah. np dot r uh, is going to just make a vector. Yeah. But in this case, we're expecting for uh, for the receiver locations, we're expecting a two D array. Okay. And so if something comes in that is not 2D, it, it it's unsure, matters. which is something we should think about. Uh, now, what I was asking, what's the difference between this this call and P array and versus NP as array? Oh. Because I'm always using as array. But, uh, I think actually as array is probably what you want in this case. Because you're so, transferring um, a vector to an array. Yeah. So array, I guess, is a little more flexible. If I were to give it uh, a list of two things, um, or like, if you if you give it, yeah, B B might be. Uh... If you give it this, sorry, if you give np dot array this, um... oh, it takes a list and transfer it into an array. Yeah, I believe so. I see. 
I don't know if that actually works. Let's try. I have B my my has to be a list, yeah. B has to be a list? Uh potentially. Yeah. It's kind okay. of Cool. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we have a problem. Right. Okay, so we've paired that guy. So if we do Demis, get a misfit of survey. That's how that works. Oh, get a misfit. We want L2. There. Oh, oh, you need dogs in there. Wait, what? Oh, right. Oh, I didn't want that function. That's cool. We need a mapping. Where's our problem? So we probably want. Oh no, it's kind of map, yeah. And I just put like yeah. And then sure, we probably want. Silly, but that's fine. Okay, nice. so then we've got one data misfit. Now, if you add them, yeah, create the master one. Two, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This um, probably should fail in the future. We shouldn't necessarily tie the same survey to two data misfits. Like, that's something we should think about when we're combining objective functions. It should. It'll probably work right now. Can you repeat that? Right now, two problems at the same survey. Yeah, two problems. Well, no, we've only created one problem, but we've given it to two data misfits. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add those together. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that seems sketchy. Because they would be technically updating the same uh, the same as function. Yeah. And All like right, potentially sorry. in an inversion, if you give a directive uh, two different data misfits that have the same problem, like that could cause some weird things to happen. Right. So that's something we should think about. Okay, so, so this <laughs> all guy's, of that to this create guy's a this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we have demis of, um, so the thing. You ask for deep breath. Uh, who has deep rod? Only the inf prop should have. Okay, well, can you can you do the? Uh, do we have an inf problem then? Oh, the survey has deep red. So the survey has deep red, and the inf prop has deep red. Okay, I'll have to double check though then what I what I was doing. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, will, but that uh, is. That's again, hopefully, something we can achieve with the uh, the linking, is be able to expose deep red um, and give you back a list of things. Okay, I'll double check. For some reason, I was only able to access one of one of the two, but uh, I'll find the other problem and I'll help send it yeah. to you. Yeah, if you did s survey. No, it might have been in problem that deep red and it return only one one of the two. Okay. I'll double check. I'll double check. Don't have to spend too much time. So okay. Yeah, so let me know. Yeah, I mean survey makes sense to have deep red because there is there's one problem, one model. Like it, it's a, it's a single forward simulation at that point. So it should be able to it has to be paired. So if you haven't paired it, it would fail to get deep red. And the pairing is like a, what are your thoughts on that? Is that a weird 
Because in some ways, like, I think we should probably just, and I was talking to Rowan about this yesterday, is just do basically, like, my simulation is, I don't know, something like. The problem in sort of, in sort of bear. Yeah. And then you would ask, like, sim dot fields of m, sim dot. And then uh, no more problem, but physics. <laughs> are we changing Wait. the name of problem? Are we, this, are we settled? I don't know if we're, we're settled. Let's no, okay. deal with that in a different. Yeah, I think the, <laughs> the objective function stuff is changing enough things. Because that would be that would pretty readable, right? We do a simulation of yeah. the physics and this survey, yeah. and then return yeah. fields. <laughs> I actually really like that. That uh, that's really readable. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Well, Put when we dots. when we get to <laughs> when we get to this, that's that's what that should look like. Where is that problem with physics? Yeah. Uh, problem, problem. The problem is problem. Cool. <laughs> Okay, um, if you have time later today, I would be game to just like sit down and yeah, try let, and I'll, I'll take an hour to uh, work stuff. work through that uh, that that example. But okay. then, yeah, we're really close, really really close. Yeah, because yeah, it's inverting, but uh, we just need all the knobs to be to be working. Yeah, that's yeah. very fair. There's a lot of man. We're going to uh, yeah. That's it's getting. Pretty complicated. <laughs> it's that it's. I mean, the code is 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 nice and slick, but uh, you know, we're starting to touch a lot of different components there. Yeah. yeah, and like trying to make sure that we can do that in a reasonably sane way. Um, yeah, that's with all the safety checks that we can possibly do. Yeah. yeah. So. We'll we'll face problems as they as they surface. Yeah. It's hard to foresee everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty close. I would say so. Yeah. So the validation the validation pull request I think can go in. The other Absolutely, one yeah. is like kind of uh, I wouldn't pull it in yet. It's uh, like with the exposing stuff. We need to think through some things before we actually start hitting on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that can that can work. Cool, cool. Um, anything else you guys want to go over? Or I see Gutney also. Well, Gutney popped in briefly. And he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, started working out with uh, Sagi on the uh, the reweighting for the DC problem. Oh yeah. And actually, we benchmarked uh, Simpag against DC fe 2 d Oh yeah. And I mean, it's slower, but uh, the results are very similar. So that's that's encouraging. Nice. That's good. Yeah. So his two two and a half D is, is doing a pretty good job. That's good. Um, In terms, like, how much slower? Uh, I don't know. I can I can uh, I can time it, but okay. it's probably a factor like three right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. There's some things things to do there. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Back to work. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining, Franklin. Sure. No problem. I have a better idea now to, to give some more thought to that issue, too. Okay. Yeah. I would appreciate hearing your thoughts on that because I feel like there are there's some interesting things happening. There's also some stuff that's potentially quite dangerous um, in terms of exposing stuff. So. Yeah. Possibly. Don't yeah. expose yourself, Franklin. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> cool. Cool. See you later. Well, thanks. See you.